Coming up, Orbital ATK Merger. Russian Injunction, what's your function? Using trampolines to get to space. And our main topic today, looking five years backwards, lots happened in five years, mm -hmm. and then five years forward. Stay with us. Tomorrow begins now. Welcome to tomorrow, episode 7.13 for Saturday, May 3rd, 2014. My name is Benjamin. With me, as always, my beautiful, lovely, and wonderful, talented wife, Carrie Ann, will be your host. And oh my gosh, this show wrote itself. There is so much news that we're going to get straight into it. I did want to say a quick thank you to all the space, uh, the patrons of tomorrow who helped make this episode go. Notice the list is even getting a little bit longer. So welcome, Brian, the new patron premiere member. Uh, if you'd like more information on how you can help fund uh, tomorrow, go to patreon.com slash tomorrow, T-M-R-O. All right, let's get straight into some space news. Uh, there was a launch, there were two launches. First up, Vega with the launch of DZZHR, which is going to be renamed. So here you go, check it out. Two, one, top, allumage P80, décollage. And if it feels like that vehicle just jumped off the pad, that's because it did. It's solid fuel for all four, well, three of the four stages uh, driving that bad boy. It launched April 29th at 0135 Coordinating Universal Time. They're actually planning on renaming the satellite to KAZ-EOSAT, K-A-Z-E-O-S-A-T-1. Once it reaches its intended orbit, it's going to be sun-synchronous orbit and deliver very high quality and multi-spectral products for a wide range of applications. That's kind of a vague term for that one, isn't it? Um, so the next launch that we've got up came uh, from a proton rocket. Rocket. <laughs> rocket. And this so rocket perfect. is a combination of launch and rocket. <laughs> <laughs> and this happened on uh, April 28th at 10:25, according to Universal Time. I'm pronouncing this right as Luch L U C H 5 V and Kazat 3. Those are going to be telecommunication, telecommunication, television broadcasting, and high speed internet access for Kazakh. Ka Kazakhstan. Oh wow. man, this is an interesting pronunciation show this week. Oh, that's going to be fun. Uh, all right, now on to the slightly bigger news that happened throughout the entire week. Orbital ATK. Orbital ATK. Uh, this is kind of crazy. If you haven't heard about it, um, Orbital Sciences and ATK have merged to become Orbital ATK. Well, they are planning on merging. It has not gone through the approval process oh, yet, so they're hoping they're the hoping evidence. that the approvals will happen by the end of 2014. Uh, in fact, um, they said that if they are able to. Uh, merge by the end of this year. They should expect to see an annual cost savings of up to a hundred million dollars. Uh, that was according to one of the uh, one of the guys that working on the uh, the merger itself. Uh, they want they still need to clear regulatory approvals and obtain shareholder approvals because these are public companies. So you can't just like be like I'm merging with you. I and suppose they've up. announced. Well, and if my understanding is correct, uh, Orbital is becoming part of ATK. Is they're sort of absorbing it, is my understanding. Mm. So uh, I guess so. Merging is sort of a weird way of putting it, but they're not being bought out. So mm. they're keeping the namesake. Uh, they're actually keeping a lot of uh, their their separate people. Separate isn't the word I want either, but. Um, I guess it is a merger. I'll just keep quiet. Never mind. So ATK stands for Alliant Tech Systems. They also had like a uh, sports group. I had no idea prior to this merger. Yeah. Um, so they have a sports group, and I guess that that's being spun off into its own company. So right. uh, Orbital ATK will only be taking care of the the space side of things. And this is an interesting concept because, you know, 
uh, ATK, they do the solid, they're best known for their solid fuels, right? Mm -hmm. The old space shuttle solid rocket boosters, ATK boosters, the new, uh, the Ares 1X five, five segment booster right. was a, uh, a ATK booster. Uh, and then the, uh, what am I saying? Ares 5 uh, is, should be an ATK five segment solid rocket booster as well. Mm -hmm. So that's what they do. They do solid fuels. And interestingly enough, the orbital Antares rocket, mm -hmm. which is the, the uh, second resupply mission to the International Space Station, they, they work with, I don't want to say they work with, but in addition to SpaceX, you have orbital with their Antares rocket. The second stage of that mm -hmm. is an ATK solid rocket stage. Right. Now, the first stage of that uses Russian engines, and we're going to get into uh, Russian engines in a second, uh, and, and that may be bad. Actually, that's a really great segue for there is yeah. now an injunction against Russian-made engines. Mm -hmm. So what's happened is SpaceX basically said, look, um, these Russian engines used on the Atlas V rocket, mm -hmm. there are sanctions against Ukraine. It's probably illegal for us to be buying more of these. Right. ULA, you can't be doing that. You're possibly breaking the law. And the U.S. government kind of said, yeah, actually, you probably can't be doing that. So now there are sanctions against, there's an injunction. Injunction, uh, yeah. They are not allowed to buy any additional engines, R Russian engines. And there you go. There's a uh, RD-180, I believe that is. So pretty. It is, and that's for an Atlas V, which now they have more Russian engines here in the U.S. So what this injunction does is it prevents them from buying new Russian engines, but it's not like they can't use the stockpile of engines that they have already right, got. Right, which I, I believe they said they've already had like a, about a two-year or so stockpile, per se. Right. Uh, so they can still fly for the next two years, of course. Uh, and all the injunction also notes that it does not prohibit the sales that have already gone through. So if you've already made a purchase order and stuff is already going through. Don't worry about that when you've already given the money. We're, we're not going to stop that from going on. It's just from like this moment on, ixnay on the baie. Right, which uh, th that day. also means, uh, so two things with that. One, uh, as I mentioned in the previous story, Antares, the first stage, also uses Russian-made engines. Mm -hmm. Now they are running out of those engines and they were looking to transfer over to the RD-180, but they haven't purchased any yet. Oops. So once they run out of engines, and they have enough engines to maintain um, enough for the NASA commercial resupply contract that they've signed. So they've got enough to fulfill their contracts. But beyond that, if NASA says, yeah, let's go ahead and go do, let's do crew, let's, let's extend your contract, they'd be like, yeah, about that. So this is where the ATK, so we just blended two stories, we kind of went back and forth. Right. This is where the ATK merger may make sense. They could, rejigger the first stage, basically rip out the current first stage and replace it with an ATK solid first stage and motor at that yeah, point. I mean, it and it would, I think that would end up being a lot like the Liberty rocket, not quite, because the Liberty mm -hmm. used a Ariane space upper stage. It was a little bit of a different, right. but we could end up with um, a new version of Liberty. This is not to say that they're planning on doing this. Right. It's also not to say that this is easy to do. It's a complete. <laughs> it's a completely new rocket at this point. Right. Uh, but it is a possibility, right? This does kind of open up a few more possibilities for Orbital to continue to supply cargo to the International Space Station, not using any foreign. Well, not any is too strong, is too strong but of word, but no longer using Ru Russian engines uh, for their first stage vehicle part of the vehicle. Uh, the other thing about the injunction. Uh, so we've got the uh, Atlas V rocket, so they'll they'll do uh, their thing. Oh, man, I just totally lost it. That's all okay. right. Okay. Well, it'll come back to you. It will come back to me later in the show. <laughs> we'll hit it up in the third segment. Uh, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, SpaceX releases a degraded video of stage recovery. Yeah, this was uh, really cool. So this is the video that SpaceX actually released. It, you can see... It you doesn't have nothing. a yeah you nothing. It looks like a snowstorm. Yeah, so they were at the fringe of what they're able to receive <laughs> on the downlink station. So there's just not a lot of usable payload here. And what they've done is they've released it on the website as something that you can download and try to rebuild. And here's w one user's attempt to rebuild it. This was actually a clever idea. All they did was take one good usable frame and overlay it on top of the bad video. So you can mm -hmm. see kind of the non-moving pixels sitting on top of it. And when you do that, you get a slight 
slightly better idea of what you're looking at, right? You can see the engine kind of firing there. Right. You can kind of see the ocean coming into view. And then you can even see it where as it comes right up on the ocean, where it starts to press the ocean away. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll kind of give it a moment here. But this was some really, really, really cool footage, I thought, of the first stage of the Falcon 9 rocket re-entry. And there, there you see the engine, engine firing. You can see the engine kind of blowing, or the ocean blown away. Yeah. Yep, and that, that's about it. That, that's all we're able to get. <laughs> and yeah, and so speaking of, the, about a week from today, actually, on May 10th, SpaceX will be flying another Falcon 9 rocket for Orbcom, and they are planning on doing stage recovery, or at least trying to do some stage recovery stuff with that one as well. So that will be uh, really cool to see that. Hopefully we can get some better video on that one. We'll see what ends up actually happening. That'll be the uh, 10th Falcon 9. It'll be 10th on the 10th. 10th on the 10th. 10 on 10. Yeah, yes. yeah, good. Check that out. That's, like that's that. pretty awesome. Um, uh, speaking of SpaceX, Dragon Mark II, uh, with all this Russian hoopla and everything else, Elon <laughs> certainly knows a good marketing opportunity when he sees one. So Dragon Mark II is to be announced uh, or unveiled, unveiled, excuse me, on May 29th, 2014. And he said, this is not a mock-up. No. So uh, I, I don't know what we're going to be seeing, but in less than a month, the human-rated version of Dragon will be unveiled to the press and we'll be able to take a peek at what that's going to look like. This is an older picture from inside the uh, crew mock-up, so you can see all seven astronauts sitting inside of Dragon uh, fairly comfortably. I mean, you, they've got a little they're, they got a little, they're a little crammed together there, but you've got all seven sitting in there, which is this, approximately the same capacity as the space shuttle, so we'll be getting that capability back from a human standpoint. Um, one other thing that happened with Dragon is they uh, brought up to the International Space Station the High Definition Earth Viewing or HDEV experiment, and it's now available live. Now, um, you can go to the Ustream link, and I, I will post that in there, but this is what it's looked like for the last two days, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, that's not a rendering error. That's just a big gray screen. And I did validate with a bunch of people that this is all they're seeing. Now, I have seen actual video from the HDEV uh, experiment, and it is quite epic, but putting up cameras in space, even though these were yeah. rad hard, if you look at it, it's just this huge rad hardened container. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just this big monstrosity of a thing. Even then, it's, it's possible that they lost it. I don't think so. You know, it's probably just something on the ground that needs to be reset or retreat. Yeah. You know, it is an experiment, but it is really cool to see those high definition views of Earth yeah. just floating by. I'm really excited to see where that's gonna go. There's another experiment going on up there um, I don't know, Earthcast oh, yeah. is what it is. And uh, that was mentioned in the chat room earlier, and I, I apologize, I don't, I don't remember who said it. But Earthcast is going to be awesome too. And that will be a more permanent, just like high def feed of Earth online. If I think that was the one it was, Earthcast. Yeah. Um, so also speaking of Russia, before we run out of time, we're going quickly because there's so much news so this much, week. So much, much. Russia is working on building a super heavy lift vehicle to send humans to Mars. There's no graphic for this one, uh, Dada. So uh, basically, uh, the Roscosmos chief engineer said uh, the construction of the first stage is already underway. So they've already begun building what is essentially a competitor to NASA's space launch system. The space launch system Mark 1 we will be able to lift 70 um, 70 tons yep. to orbit. The Russian version of that will be able to lift 80 tons to orbit. The Mark of II, of course, of course, just a little bit more. You got it. But but the Mark II, uh, the Russian Mark II uh, can lift 130 or 140 tons. I don't remember which to orbit. And the Russian version will be able to do 120, 120. tons. So a little bit less on the Mark II version. But at that point, it's so much that, you know, we're yeah. splitting hairs at that point. Uh, so uh, Space Race 2.0 happening, maybe a little bit, <laughs> right? Little, I mean, Russia's bit? like, all right. Uh, and then the Russia um, uh, official who said, a U.S., if they continue down this line, they're going to need a trampoline to get their astronauts into space. I'm right. paraphrasing, but the, the word trampoline was definitely used. Uh, so that combined with, um, you know, now we're going to be, we're building and already constructing a super heavy lift rocket, Saturn-class rocket. Oh, and Russia has mentioned before that they want to create a lunar colony by the year 2040. Yeah. So a lot of really amazing things happening in space. Crazy pants. Well, which is, I think Russia's comments also, I think, uh, sort of prodded along uh, Elon's announcement of the Dragon Mark II, as well as Boeing's uh, uh, interior CST 100 interior uh, unveiling. Uh, I'm sure they were planning on doing it soon anyhow, but uh, the timing, you can't really argue with the timing on mm -hmm. this one, if you will. Uh, so the the Boeing CST 100, uh, that was what you're looking at. This is their... Uh, That's mock a mock-up. Yeah, this is their mock-up. <clears throat> Pardon me. 
But they've actually got it, the the second image they've got. This is the computer rendering. Yeah. It's a little bit on its side, so you kind of have to you, you can see Children where the chair. It takes a little. minute to kind of for your brain to figure out what's what. <laughs> uh, but you can see the chairs there, and actually, it's a sleek looking interior. Yes, it is. And they they said, look. There aren't nine million knobs and dials on this thing. Mm -hmm. It's designed for you to go up to the space station and back. That's what this thing is for. So yeah. rather than the pilot sitting there and flying the machine, the machine will pretty much kind of fly itself, and then you just have kind of some abort controls, mm -hmm. you know, docking controls, the basic stuff that you need to fly to 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 have a successful mission, which you know m makes a ton of sense. We can actually we were able to make these things pretty much autonomous back in the '60s. So, yeah. Uh, well, you know. uh, NASA put out a little video uh, just showing you know the the unveiling, uh, if you will, and they had a couple of astronauts there uh, who were commenting on what the interiors look like. And at the very very end of the video, you got to watch it all to the end. It's only probably about a minute and a half long. Uh, they were like, so you know, what do you think of the insides? Is it, is it an upgrade? And one of the astronauts says, of course it's an upgrade. It's American built. <laughs> and then they end on that slate, and I was like. Oh, 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 snap! She did not! Oh, I was just... Like I said, you can't can't quite... Uh, uh, that timing of those different announcements. Hmm. 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 Yeah. All okay. right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, our main topic, with all of this news and all of this cool new stuff, it, you know, we've talked before in the past, you know, space takes a really long time, but we were talking in the car, we said, actually, consider what's happened in the last five years. <sighs> A huge I'm amount exhausted. has happened in space in five years, and I don't think that we comprehend yeah. how much has happened. So we're going to take a look back at the last five years and where we're at now and compare and contrast, because I don't think everyone's remembered how much has changed in five years, and then take a look at the next five years and where we could be. So stay with us. We'll be right back. And welcome back. We'd like to thank all of the patrons of tomorrow who help make this show go. Without you, we wouldn't be able to be here. These are the Space Vidcast producers that will be renamed once we have a really cool new logo. These are people who have dedicated $5 or more to help bring this show to you. Remember, we are community funded. We entire uh, almost entirely rely on funds from the community. We do get a little bit of ad revenue from YouTube, but it is it doesn't even pay for the web hosting. So your continued contributions to Patreon help make us to the tomorrow episodes go and continue to bring them to you week after week. So thank you to all the producers. You bring tomorrow to everyone. You bring you, you bring us tomorrow today. <laughs> <laughs> Any other cheesy ones we got? No, I don't know. All I'm right, sure all right, something cool. else. All right, uh, let's let's get into our uh, main. <laughs> actually, right before we get into the main topic, yes. I did want to, there. Are, I have some shoes on the desk. Oh. These green shoes, and I'm gonna I'm going to point these out, okay. much to your dismay. Yep. These green shoes. Uh, we have a tradition back when we were covering the space. I have a tradition back when we were covering. <laughs> she's gonna correct me. Back when we were covering the space shuttle, um, I would change my shirt to green or red based mm -hmm. on the status of the vehicle, and that kind of morphed over time into always wearing a green shirt, green for go. Mm -hmm. And for any SpaceX launches or anything that we've been covering, I've been trying to find a green shirt to wear, and it's a little bit annoying because there aren't very many good-looking green shirts. And I thought, you know what? Every tradition needs a little bit of a little little bit of an updating, a little bit little bit of a and some bit whimsy. Of and some whimsy. So uh, we went onto the Converse website, and if there's a way I can share the recipe with you guys, I'll, I'll try to find it and do it. And we built. You have to custom build these because they don't make them. We built these sh green for go shoes. Uh, they're not too terribly expensive. Show the back. Too. Uh, I'm supposed to show the back too. And so anytime we have a launch that we're covering, uh, or a launch that I'm participating in in one way or another, uh, I will be wearing these shoes, green for go shoes. Uh, it's to help uh, help get the vehicle off the pad. That's well, particularly now that we're not covering launches outside anymore. <laughs> that's that's oh man! I had the for those who remember, I also had the the uh, go hair, which was um, uh, back on the shuttle era. Again, the hair or the wind would push my hair in a certain direction, and it would just stick that way. Well, if the wind was that high on the ground, Probably pretty much going. meant we weren't going to go. So uh, if my hair was sticking up, it meant that we were no go. So we used my hair as a method to determine mm -hmm. whether the vehicle was going to launch. All right, um, main topic. <laughs> I, I know. For, hey, hey. 
we like to have fun. Thank All right, main topic. Um, a lot has changed in five years. We I, I wrote some things down as a quick reminder of like, yeah. here are a few different things uh, that maybe we don't remember. And, and by the way, chat room, I'm sure I forgot some stuff. So go ahead and bring up other things that I don't mention. Yeah. But first off, five, five years ago, so from 2009 to 2014, mm -hmm. Uh, the Falcon La Falcon 9, the rocket, the one that's about to fly in a week, mm -hmm. had never flown. Not once. Not one successful flight. And had never lifted off the pad. And uh, when, like we just said, I mean, it's coming up on its 10th. Yes, that's correct. Coming up on its 10th launch. In fact, it didn't launch until 2010. June 4th, 2010 was the maiden launch of the Falcon 9. The Dragon cargo vessel mm -hmm. that sent up to the International Space Station. They're revealing a new one, mm -hmm. the Mark II, mm -hmm. coming up uh, later this month. Yes. Five years ago, never flown. Not once. Had never lifted off the pad. That's it so actually crazy. was also on board that maiden flight. That's where they brought up their wheel of cheese, June 4th, 2010. Uh, this is coming up. This next flight will be, the next time it flies, next will be its, sixth, will be its flight. sixth flight. Mm -hmm. Yep, so quite a bit. Wow. You guys remember Constellation? Cancellation what? Can Constellation was still a thing. <laughs> Five years ago, Constellation was uh, not cancellated. Cancellated? <laughs> that didn't work. No. I tried. Such I failed. I tried. But yeah. That whole Constellation thing was, was still a real thing, and we were all, oh. we were all griping. And if you remember, because of Constellation, we we came up with the phrase "experts in Utah." I think that was Senator. <gasps> Senator yes. Shelby, yeah, I'm getting oh, laughing from the control room. <laughs> Experts from Utah say that we need to use solid fuel, so we're going to write that into, Ouch. we're not going to let the rocket scientists design it. We're going to tell no. them they have to use solid fuel. And that's where ATK became the big bad yeah. back in the day. Remember, it wasn't ULA that was the big no, bad. ATK. It was ATK. And a warning to ULA, be cool, right? I mean, don't do dicky things like ATK did back in the day, Well, because this is what happens. To ATK's credit, I think uh, somewhere between at that point and now, they have done, they've made a concerted effort to uh, become more nimble and really sort of uh, take out a lot of the fat and change the way that they've done a lot of things. I mean, for crying out loud, they're merging with orbital sciences. Right. Like, you know, it, it, if, if there was ever a sign that ADK was really, um, truly being honest about what they do and where they're going and where they want to go, mm -hmm. I, I think that's a huge sign. But I think that was the difference. So they used to play the huge political game. Yep. They had all the lobbyists and they were doing things that everyone was looking at them going, what are you thinking? Right. And it's like, it was just just change the name to ULA, mm -hmm. like wrapping themselves up in the flag and like <laughs> like you know we're, we're American, so we can we can be sole provider right, and right. we're going to charge you nine million. Yeah, right. So it's the exact same mistakes, different company. Yeah, like, it's like they didn't see what ATK had done and didn't learn from those mistakes. Yeah. In my humble opinion. Just All right. So um, uh, Constellation was still a thing that hadn't been canceled yet. You know it was a thing until a thing? 2010. You know what else is still a thing? Hmm. Uh, space shuttle. Space shuttle. Still a thing. They were flying until July 8th, 2011. So several years later. Yeah. So we've only been without a space shuttle for a couple years now. Feels yeah. like longer, actually. Feels like a lot longer. Feels like a lot longer. Space shuttle was still a thing. Antares. We were just talking about orbital ATK. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'd mentioned the Falcon 9 up front. You know, Falcon 9 had never flown. Antares yeah. had flown in a, a total of zero times <laughs> as well. In fact, five years ago, I don't think that they had even begun... I, I don't remember, but I don't think they'd even begun the construction on, what are they launched from, Slick 1? Yeah. Uh, or Slick 0. It's one of those. Something, it's something like, that. like that. Um uh, up in uh, Wallops. Yeah. So I, it was like, it was just kind of a, a glimmer in their eye at that point. Yeah. Well, and Antares is coming up on its fourth flight. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, which is kind of crazy, which should be later this year. Actually, by the end of the year, I think they're slated to do uh, nearly nine flights. Well, not nine flights from here on out, but I mean, they will be coming up on their ninth flight at the end of this year is what I'm trying to say, uh, which is, you know, good for them because they had yet to fly as of five years ago. But you have here in the notes, it says April 23rd, 2013 was right. their first flight. So that's that's, Less than a year. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. good for them, man. That's really impressive. So where are we going from here, I guess, is, or, or, you know, we just looked at the last five years. Right. We still had the space shuttle. Mm -hmm. Falcon had never flown. Mm -hmm. Antares had never flown. Dragon had never flown. That's crazy. ATK was the big bad. ULA was just kind of a company that launched rockets. That's what it looked like. That's what the landscape looked like. Uh, Soyuz was still flying. <laughs> but you know what? Soyuz was unchanged. <laughs> but uh, Virgin Galactic was like six months out or so. Virgin Galactic was six months out. Now, compared to that to today, Which Virgin Galactic... 
Galactic. Only like six or eight six, months out. Six months out. Yeah. Virgin Galactic, six months out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, George, George is going to have my head, oh, man. Oh, sorry, guys. We love you. <laughs> we do. We are excited for Virgin we Galactic are. to fly. And they're six months out. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> okay. But... We're laughing with you, not at you. <laughs> we are. So, I mean... We are excited for Virgin Galactic. By the end of this year, I mean, even ignoring the next five years, by the end of this year, or the Orbital ATK merger will be complete. Should be. Uh, should be complete. Virgin Galactic is, if they're not already flying, they will be any day. They'll be six months away. No, but in all seriousness, <laughs> in all seriousness, they should be. Uh, and then that means Antares will be coming up on their 10th launch. Falcon 9 will be coming up on, you know, their... 12th or 13th launch something well, I mean, along those consider, lines. consider this. I mean, it's uh, ridiculous. They're releasing, or they're showing off Mark II. Right. Which means, I, I know I don't, I know that NASA is saying 2017, but Na I don't know what SpaceX is saying. I don't think right. SpaceX has said we're going 2017. You know, so Charlie Bolden's probably saying, look, they can bring NASA astronauts in 2017. Sure. But that doesn't mean that's when Dragon Mark II will fly. That right. just means that's when Dragon Mark II will bring NASA astronauts to the space station. Right. Consider... They're going to have to do test flights. They're going to have to orbit the Earth. How cool is that going to be when we get to see Mark II way sooner than we expected to be able For to? For sure. And I we, think that's going to be really we cool. We know that SpaceX already employs a couple of people who uh, have, are previously known as astronauts or previously <laughs> known as NASA astronauts. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's really not without the realm of... The chat, the the realm chat room's talking about Blue Origin right now. No, where they're going to be... Shh, oh, oh. <laughs> it is. Well, that, that's kind of what they're saying. <laughs> that's what they're saying. It's like no, oh, orbital, uh, uh, orbital. Uh, yes. I it wrapped, and so I can't read the data. But orbital, right. orbital pin data, pin data, uh, said not even Blue Origin knows anything about Blue Origin. Oh yeah. And that will be true in five years from now as well. I think not. No, anyone will know anything about Blue Origin. So but soon to be on Prime, so it's okay. <laughs> Blue Origin. <laughs> on Amazon Prime. <laughs> order, order one Blue Origin on Amazon Prime. <laughs> I'm sorry. For I those who don't there? understand the joke, it's Blue sorry. Origin's founder, Jeff Bezos, is also the founder of Amazon. So that's why that's actually quite funny. Yeah, sometimes right. I am. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, in the next five years, it's it's going to be really insane. Uh, assuming for a moment that uh, the space launch system kind of gets up and running, they want to be flying 2017. 2017, they're currently, it's under construction right now. Sure, so, so they I, I've changed my tune a little bit based on that data. I've said right. I didn't think SLS would ever fly. Right. I think they're far enough along in basic construction uh, that the next president who comes on, it will be too early in their tenure to be able to cancel the program. Probably. So I think it will fly at least once. Okay, so uh, so the space Barring system... any huge changes in that data, like, you know, oh, we've right. been set back $10 billion in 10 years. Right, right. so space launch system should be flying... Flying. Will, fl will have flown flying. once sure. in the next five years. Sure, but I mean, you know... At least once. Uh, and then uh, Dragon theoretically could be flying humans. Yep. Um, I don't think, uh, barring a huge catastrophe, right. I think Dragon will be flying humans. Sure. I think they're six months out. Russia should have a super heavy lifter. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. So NASA will have a super heavy lifter. Uh, by then, I, I can't imagine for a moment that SpaceX would be sitting on their laurels and not be about to be presenting a super heavy lifter or well, a heavy lifter, So I guess. Elon's talked about MCT before, the Mars right? Colonial Transport, but we don't know what that is. Right. So he's just mentioned MCT, like this is a thing we want to sure, do. Sure, but I, I think in five years we'll have more information on that, and I, mean, I wonder if we'll actually loud, see. Dragon's only flown like four or five times, and he already wants to put out a new a new variation, right? A human variation, like I just I just don't see SpaceX sitting on there being like it's oh, cool, no. everybody, no big. Oh, Russia wants to go to the moon and Mars. We got this, guys. Because, you know, and look for that tweet later on today, by the way. Uh, <laughs> that, that, I just Twitter.com slash Elon Musk. I, That's uh, <laughs> everything you ever want to know about the future there. Just, there you you know, he just, he, he doesn't, he likes being competitive, I, I feel. And I, I, I don't. He likes winning, too. And he likes winning. So yeah. I think if Russia is about to fly a super heavy lifter that, and that Elon has basically already said that he wants to do, I can't imagine that he's not going to try and push that through as fast as 
humanly or unhumanly Ooh, possible. Icarus Factor brought up something interesting. Skylon Saber is set for a test in 2016. That is awesome. the that is the engine that would allow for a single stage to orbit space plane. Right. It's a horizontal uh, takeoff, horizontal landing space plane. It doesn't drop any of its stuff, and the engine works both in the soupy atmosphere here on Earth mm -hmm. and up in space. So you could actually use this single engine to kind of transfer from soup into nothingness right. and continue along. So that that would be cool. Um, and then uh, David R. said, in the next five years, Virgin Galactic and X-Core should both enter commercial service. I think that's a fair statement. I think we'll see X-Core enter commercial service as well. They seem to be uh, pretty coming along quite a bit. Chris K. says, yeah, but what about China? Actually, China's another big one. China's doing a whole bunch of weird they're stuff. They're doing a whole bunch of stuff, and they kind of do it in spurts, I think. So I think we're going to see another huge spurt from China. And I, they've kind of shown interest on the moon. Right. And, you know, they've sent a rover over there. And I, th I think with Russia building a super heavy lifter, with America building a super heavy lifter, they're probably going to feel the pressure to build a super heavy lifter and, and send something to the moon. Uh, right. Most likely humans. Now, it might be flags and footprints again, just right. to be like, you know, Chinese flag. Uh, but maybe it will be an actual colony. And, and ultimately, right. that's what we're looking for. Yeah. You know, the, the citizens of tomorrow, the community of tomorrow, we don't want just flags and footprints. We want to be able to go to the moon and stay. We want to go to Mars and stay because getting back's hard. Um, you know, we want to get humanity out there and not just, yep, there for a few hours and come back. Um, well, that and then like, uh, so NASA just uh, awarded money to Moon Express, Astrobotics, and Mast and Space Systems for lunar landers. So you can't tell me because we know Dave Mastin. And he's crazy, and we he's love him. He's the good crazy? He's the good crazy, but you know that he's working on stuff that he's not telling us. Mm -hmm. That he's not not just not telling the world, but not telling us either, because mm -hmm. crazy. Dave! Like that. And uh, <laughs> so, I mean, there's, there's tons of stuff that's going on with that as well. Like, these names that oh, we've man. heard of before, and then... Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge was oh, back two, five Lunar years Lander ago. Challenge. The Northrop Grumman Lunar that's what helped make us. Yeah. That was one of the things, and a huge yeah, thank we you were to barely a thing William Pomerantz and um, Rev Rev, uh, Rev, Rev uh, uh, Fabio. Michael. <laughs> uh, for entrusting us to carry that live. Yeah. And that was, that was what helped make that. And um, another big one, ISDC, was another big um, one that helped make us in 2009. Uh, we went to ISDC. And actually... Thank you, um, Tim Bailey. Yeah, thank you. Huge thank you to uh, Tim Tim for making us a, a, a huge success with ISDC. And um, ISDC is coming up again, if we can take a quick side detour sure. and talk about ISDC, because yeah. that's that's an international space development conference. It's actually here in Los Angeles this year, and it's a great conference to go to. So it's it's one of those places where you can you can rub elbows with like Buzz Aldrin and people who have stepped on the moon and people who like the guys in charge of doing ATK orbital or orbital ATK merger. And, you know, I all think Elon, names, all Elon Musk names. is speaking. And here's another thing. I am speaking there as well. I will be speaking there on Saturday. I know. Oh, I will be speaking there Saturday, which, by the way, we will have no show that week because I will be at ISDC speaking right. um, about you know stuff like this. Stuff like so this. Uh, yeah, I, I would I would highly recommend. It's it's going to be great. It's going to be fun, and it's uh, the, their theme is kind of along the lines of the theme of this particular episode mm -hmm. of you know kind of looking forward and where we're going, moving everything to commercial space, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's going to be a really cool, interesting show. So uh, check it out. Just Google ISDC International Space Development Conference right here in LA and uh, I hope I'll see you guys there and make Couple sure to more. grab my autograph so I feel really special. Yeah, don't do that. You can't read it anyway. Uh, two more comments from the yeah, chat go. room that I just happened to notice really quickly. Uh, Helldesk said that Armadillo Outer Space was dormant. It is still dormant. Still I don't dormant. Think, you think it'll come back, guys? You think? I, do you think in the next five years... Oh, we're going to go along in the show. I don't care. Okay. This is interesting stuff. So, And we're an <laughs> internet show, so we don't have to abide by actual time. Do you think that Armadillo Outer Space, because Carmack got a boatload of money mm -hmm. from the sale of Facebook, Oculus to Facebook, right? Because right. he was at Oculus. Right. So with that money, will he reignite Armadillo? Now, he has said that he's okay with SpaceX being plan A, but you still need a plan B. <laughs> Who's our plan B? Pretty right? Much. And and you can't just spin up and be like, oh, well, SpaceX not doing so well. Now I'll try to do it. You need to be running concurrently. So will, will he do that or is he done with space? So that's, that's my question in the chat room. And then uh, apparently we bombed the moon in 2009 and it's still there. So everyone who can suck it. Oh, man. The moon, the moon bomber is in our chat room as well. That was Vax, and uh, Vax has been with us from almost the beginning or the very beginning. Yeah, really. So really close. Vax is another uh, amazing, crazy, uh, mad scientist kind of thing. 
Uh, anything you said there were two comments. Was no, that, that was it. Comment? That was it. That was L Cross uh, launched in June 2009, impacted in October 2009, uh, and then Helldeath made the joke about Armadillo being dormant. That awesome. was funny. All right, cool. We're gonna we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we're gonna be talking about comments from last week's show. Mm -hmm. So stay with us. Tomorrow we'll be right back. One zero. Lift off. The fleet of space shuttles were doing amazing things in space. We've got all your space geekery right here. And welcome back to tomorrow. I'd like to have a huge thank you for all the patrons of tomorrow who have helped make this show go. These are people who have contributed one dollar or more for this specific episode. And that's the neat thing about Patreon, is that you you tell us what you think the show is worth. If you think it's worth a dollar, if you think it's worth 50 cents, uh, if you think it's worth $10 per episode, then that's what you contribute per episode. And you can set caps. You can say, look, I think it's worth 10 bucks per episode, but I'm not gonna give you more than 50 bucks a month. Maybe that's a bit extreme for most people. So you go, you know, this list is really long. And these are people who have said something along the lines of, look, I think it's worth a dollar per episode. I, I pay a dollar to see that, but I'm not gonna give him more than five bucks a month. That's approximately the cup of uh, a mocha price of a large mocha <laughs> well, <laughs> at, at Starbucks. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the price of a cup of coffee, give up one coffee, help pay to keep the uh, show of tomorrow on the air and continue to do what we do. So a huge thank you. Patreon.com slash T-M-R-O and thanks to all those patrons. All right, let's talk about some of the comments from last week's show. Steven has this to say. I think the Air Force should be sued, but not by Elon or SpaceX, though I am glad that they did. The Air Force has just thrown away millions of taxpayer dollars, our money, at ULA's expense and politically risk launch services instead of getting our bang for our buck with SpaceX or some other company, maybe Orbital Sciences. Then again, Orbital probably couldn't do it yet. That is our money that the Air Force has thrown away. The IRS or Congress or someone should have sued the Air Force over this. At least SpaceX is. It's not that black and white is the it's only not, thing. It's not, sadly. Um, so, uh, you know, full disclosure, uh, we both work at SpaceX and our opinions here are our own and they are not that of SpaceX. Uh, that is true of every episode. You saw that disclaimer in the beginning. So I just want to reiterate that. Our opinions have nothing to do with what SpaceX opinion is. They have no idea about the show. They don't fund it. They don't sponsor it. They don't do anything about it. Uh, so the thing with this particular lawsuit is that, um, yeah, it makes sense now, but it's, <laughs> it, it's hard because SpaceX doesn't have some of the capabilities that ULA has, specifically right. uh, horizontal, I'm sorry, vertical integration, mm -hmm. right? So if, if SpaceX were to compete against ULA today to get a rocket launch for tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, they would not be able to get it because they can't do the vertical integration. And that is required by some of these DOD payloads. Which I didn't quite understand. Um, I, I asked why that right. was. Uh, I said, well, I don't really... It's sensitive payloads exactly. that can't be stuck on their side. So they have right. to go... They can only be oriented a very specific way. And so because of that, you have to do vertical integration. SpaceX, to keep costs down, does horizontal integration. Now, mm -hmm. comm satellites can generally be horizontally integrated. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. So even if... SpaceX was allowed to compete, they may not win. And that's the thing to remember. Now, I do agree with the concept that SpaceX is suing because they should still be allowed to compete. They can compete and lose, and that's okay. And I totally agree with Elon on this. Compete and lose is okay. Not being allowed to compete is ridiculous. But this just happened, right? This just happened last December, <laughs> right? I mean, it, it's, yes. not like, it's not like anyone has had a lot of time to make this go. And the wheels of the government move substantially slower than the wheels of SpaceX. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe the government should have said something, but it's going to take someone like SpaceX. And I don't think it should just be SpaceX. I'm of the opinion anyone should be able to compete yeah. for this. Now, yeah. that also means anyone can lose it. So if, if, if ULA has the best rocket, they can do the vertical integration, they can do all the weird, whatever it's necessary for the payload, that's cool. Now, if the Air Force purposely designs criteria that only ULA can do that is not um, uh, necessary for we the will launch. only make contracts with those who have the initials of U or an L or an A. Something like that, right? You have to have the letter <laughs> U in your company name, or you can't launch. If they make stupid requirements that they make absolutely no sense, just so ULA can get it, that's right. just as bad too. Yeah. So 
what we need to do is open this up to competition so that anyone can bid for it uh, and have reliable rockets. And, you know, Elon made the argument, you know, back when the Atlas first launched, how many times did it launch prior to the government? You know, it, it had never had a successful mission and they just flew with it. Right. Well, times are different now. So, and that's not how we go anymore. So now it's had a bunch of successful missions. So has the Delta line. Mm -hmm. And you know what? New entrants will have to prove themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Falcon rocket has done that. It has proven itself. And I think uh, we'll see that that official check mark soon. And then if uh, Orbital wants to go in, mm -hmm. Orbital ATK, they mm -hmm. got a solid version of this, mm -hmm. and they think that they can compete, mm -hmm. then they should be able to compete. Darn tootin'. They should have the right to compete. Maybe they will win, maybe they won't, but they should be able to compete because it's a taxi service. Why are we spending obscene amounts of money when we don't have to? Anyhow, end of my soapbox. There we go. Okay. Like uh, this is from John. John says... I see the little blue Lego man on the mic has returned this episode. I have absolutely no idea what he's talking about. They keep talking about this thing. I weird. don't know what they're talking about. It's just, well, weird. It's just strange. Yeah. It's weird. People it's are just seeing weird. things. You know what? Clean your monitors. Could, you know, that could be it. That clean, could be it. Clean your that monitors. Uh, <laughs> Chris says, uh, it's about time for Reddit for Space Vacast. Finally, a place to spread articles and space nerd debate it out. Yeah, absolutely. So for those who don't know, we now have the Reddit of tomorrow, which is, I. this is why I like the name change, guys. I can do cheesy stuff like that, oh, and yeah. I'm a cheesy person. Yeah. So I'm enjoying it, and whether you are or not, I'm loving every moment of being able to say the community of tomorrow, patrons of tomorrow, and the Reddit of tomorrow, uh, which is at reddit.com slash r slash t-m-r-o. It's a great place. Uh, th huge thank you to Chris Radcliffe, who's helping to kind of prop this up. We've also put a link to it. Um, we're using it as our forums, as it were. So we mm -hmm. actually call it forums on the Space Vacast site. Mm -hmm. People have been begging us for forums Forever. Since the beginning of Space Vidcast, back when we were doing that, right? So, not that we're not doing it. Uh, so, and I have argued that uh, we don't quite have the community for it. NASA Spaceflight, uh, their forums are amazing. There's nothing we can add. There's just nothing. Right? I mean, if that. you want a forum, that's where you should go, in my humble opinion, and sign up for L2. It's, a, it's absolutely amazing. So, that's the best space forum. But this was kind of a unique twist where I think we can add something. Mm -hmm. Slash R slash space. Uh, that's an interesting subreddit and mm -hmm. it's good. Mm -hmm. And slash r slash SpaceX is also an interesting subreddit and it's good. Mm -hmm. But we have a unique kind of twist on the future. Yeah. And it's 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 a little bit different than everyone else. So I think the the subreddit of tomorrow is a unique place where you kind of get these kind of stories in advance. And you know, I'll, I'll possibly even if you guys want, let me know. Um, should we post the show rundown in the Reddit? subreddit Ooh. prior to the show so you guys know what we're going to talk about Ooh. and can you know maybe talk about it in the chat room prior to the show or stuff like that i don't know so things like that but i would love for everyone to participate in the reddit of tomorrow totally uh next comment mm -hmm. <laughs> says uh yeah uh, i forgot to watch live again i'll put an alarm for next week <laughs> yeah that's from your jaman <laughs> zero uh and, and the reason i put that in the comments is because you can actually on um, our spacefigcast.com slash live and there's actually tmro.tv it forwards to space because we're working on a new tmro website right um uh if you on that uh, live stream box, mm -hmm. you can actually subscribe to us on live stream mm -hmm. and you will get notified when we go live. So yes. some people had asked for an SMS notification. Some people just subscribe to our live stream channel and you will get notified when we're live. There's also a countdown to the next show. You can mm -hmm. add that to your calendar automatically. Well, if you really absolutely positively have to have an SMS message, you can follow Space Fedcast or TMRO on Twitter and uh, just send notifications to phone. There you go. And then you'll get uh, we'll an SMS message uh, from the, the show. So there are we do our best to make that fairly easy for you so that you will get notifications automatically from us when we're going to go live. Otherwise, every Saturday, 2100 UTC. Uh, in fact, you were talking about it the other day. You said, look, we're every single Saturday unless we're not. In, in other Which words, I know sounds terrible, just, but... just assume that we're live unless we tell you we're not. Otherwise, we're live. Just, just put it in your calendar and just repeat it saying, look, they're yes. live. And then once in a while, we just won't be live. Like once in a blue moon, we we're won't be very, live. very, very clear when we're not. Otherwise, we always are. Speaking of, we'll not be live next week. Right. Very, very high probability <laughs> of a SpaceX launch. I will not be able to make a show next week. So there's that. There's a possibility that will change, but assume for now, no show next week. All right. All right. So uh, next one comes from Kel Kelk Shiz. 
That's not even fair. Uh, it says, very exciting news about the reusability of the first stage. Agree with Musk's position that SpaceX should be allowed to compete, though I think his nationalistic argument is a bit cheap. Yeah, I, you know, I would I would agree. I would say that any company wrapping themselves in the flag um, just, is, just shows a lack of data, right? So it's... Yeah. Don't make that emotional argument, and a lot of people will, but it, it just shows that you don't have a real thing then. If if you have a real argument, use the real data. Now, I would also argue Elon did use actual data. It wasn't a, you know, right. for America. Uh, I mean, it was, a, it was, there was definitely like, this is why, this makes sense, here are the numbers. Right. Now, he added the nationalistic part was a small subset of it, but I don't disagree. I think, I think. ULA's basically entire argument is all nationalistic, yeah. and it's sad. So I, I would I would wish that neither company would do that and would just stick to the data. This is why it makes sense. You know, there are point counterpoint kind of thing, and you know, no more flag wrapping kind of stuff. Works really well at a Miley Cyrus concert, though. But what? How you doing, LA? And LA <laughs> goes crazy pants. Woo, America! Pretty much. And one of those. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Let me hear you suffer some noise from a rocket. I, that, I failed completely. Wow. That was awesome. That make was, some noise for a rocket. Make, make some noise for that some. That just sounds inappropriate. Anyway, so uh, Glacius Blue says, ULA seems to know they are sunk and are just trying to secure what money they can before SpaceX forces them to close. Even if SpaceX doesn't win the suit, next time the contract comes up, SpaceX will have a several dozen and launches and more than likely reduced costs further. ULA know that they're screwed and are just using what politics they can milk it for just another couple of years. I agree. I think this entire purpose of the block buy is so that they can milk the system for as long as humanly possible because they know that they're sunk and that uh, they have to compete at this point. Well, then maybe they should take some notes from ATK. <laughs> well, you know, actually, that's the exciting thing about the uh, Orbital ATK merger is saying. that now they can, you know, that's actually a pretty good combination of companies. <laughs> and they could potentially, and they're hungry. Yeah. And so they could help reduce the cost. The, the key to tomorrow is reducing the cost of spaceflight, mm -hmm. getting the cost of things into space down, really, really far down, because they're astronomically expensive. I didn't mean to use the word astronomically. And we need to, the lower we can get that price, the more markets we open up, and the more we enable things in space, the more we enable the community of tomorrow, the colony of tomorrow, the society of tomorrow. That is key. And so Orbital ATK being hungry yeah. and potentially helping to drive those costs down. SpaceX, they're hungry too, oh, yeah. right? So driving <laughs> those costs down. The thing that is in our way are these big lumbering corporations, mm -hmm. in my opinion, these big lumbering corporations like ULA, who enjoys the status quo because they're just they're, they're just feeding on this stuff and they have no need to change. And they didn't think they would need to change. Right. And then these hungry companies come along and go, well, actually, we can do everything you're doing just as good for a fraction of the price. So why are we doing it with you? And the only option a ULA will have in the future, mm -hmm. in my opinion, is change and adapt or die. Now, I hope they choose option one. I don't right. want them to die because more competition is better. Yeah. So uh, what I want them to do is actually find ways to radically reduce the cost of spaceflight. And if they do that, all the more power to them. Then we all win. I'm not anti-ULA. I'm anti-high-cost spaceflight. Yeah. And that, unfortunately, is ULA's song right now, Super High Cost Spaceflight. But as we've said before, that used to be ATK's song. That used to be ATK's thing. And now they're, they've stopped that whole little tune. They're, they're, they're hungry again. Yeah. And they're looking to revolutionize hopefully looking to revolutionize access to space. And yeah. it's not just hoping that the government will throw them huge amounts of money. Now they actually went out on their own dime and built Liberty. Now a lot of people didn't like Liberty, but you know, they did it. Yeah, they and tried so I, something. So I have you a lot of respect credit for at that. Least they, at least they try so I have a lot of respect for ATK yeah. for trying to make and now hopefully the fruits of that label will work with this merger mm -hmm. and they'll be able to use that on the Antares vehicle. Yep. And we'll actually have Liberty 2.0 reborn and this new low cost solid fuel vehicle. Yeah. And now solid fuel, a lot of people hate solid fuel. Don't hate on solid fuel, guys. It has its it has it a has purpose. its advantages. And you just need to use it for that purpose. When you start trying to use one thing that's not meant for that, you know, you start trying to 
bang a hammer into a wall with your iPhone, it's not going to work very well. You know, it's it has a bang very... a hammer into your wall. Oh, with an dang iPhone? it! Bang a nail! Dang it! Dang it! Dang it! You could bang a hammer into your oh, wall. Oh, so many things. You anyway, were so close. I was really close. My point still remains: when you try to use something inappropriately, it will not work. Johan had an interesting concept. God dang it! Yeah. What if ATK Orbital, or Orbital ATK, sorry, mm-hmm. bought Dream Chaser? What if ULA got off their freaking high horse and bought out Blue Origin, and then maybe we'd know something about them? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean, no, they'll just absorb them, and then we'll never know anything about them. That's what <laughs> will happen. Again. That's what will happen. All right. That is our show for this week. For those of you watching live, stay with us. We'll do a quick uh, After Dark episode. Someone asked if we could post After Dark episodes on a, maybe a different YouTube channel. They're kind of a pain in the butt to work with, so probably not. If there's a huge enough demand, um, maybe, but I... I just I don't I don't see the value there. Do you? I don't yeah. know. Let's I mean, if enough people put it say, put up on Reddit. Let's see what people say. Yeah, you know, actually, actually, no. I'm gonna make you guys put it up on Reddit. Talk about <laughs> After Dark. If you want After Dark, throw it up on Reddit. If we get if enough upvotes on that, and if enough people comment saying yes, and everyone's voting that up and saying yes is a thing that we really, really want on demand, uh, then we'll do it. But uh, if not, then no. So there you go. All right. Uh, if we hit the five thousand dollar Patreon mark, mm-hmm. where we talk about more shows, mm-hmm. um, it makes a lot more sense for us to do it at that point because then it's just another show that we can kind of add in, and you know, it, it makes sense to spend the time to make it happen. All right, that's our show for this week. I want to thank all of you so much for joining us once again. Next week's show, May tenth, most likely not going to happen. So us uh, and the show after that, I will be at ISDC giving a live presentation. Also not going to happen. So likely two weeks with no show from tomorrow. Uh, But we'll return in three weeks, or if the launch gets pushed back for any reason, we'll return next week. Uh, So I'd like to thank everyone so much for watching, and um, may the 4th be with you. That's not right. Oh, wow. Ooh. Hi, five.